beautiful little bit of music. Guys, where did you get together? Where are you from? I'm from Bombay. <clears throat> I'm from Sussex in the UK. From Sussex? Yeah. So how did you get together? <laughs> um, I think that's what happenstance is no. all about. We met uh, in Sydney actually. We met in Sydney. I was giving an Art of Living course and Gavin was on the course. Mm. And I knew that he was a guitarist. And we spent most of the breaks just jamming. Yep. And we've been friends ever since. I see it's a fun way to experience, to experience clarity of mind, increased enthusiasm, increased energy and focus. That's the recipe for everybody in Christchurch. So I've got to say welcome guys, you've, you've read it very well. Yeah. This is part of the, one of the reasons you're here. Yes, this is actually the only reason I'm here. Yeah. But you're not just doing Christchurch, you're doing... Wellington and Auckland as well, yep. on Friday and Saturday. Yeah. So it's a very short, very quick tour. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just listening to the music in the background and it is so unique, it is brilliant. It's very soothing music, some of it is very old. Um, some of the music I sing is about two and a half thousand years old. So you could say they're top 40 from 500 BC. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Gavin has a so very Ju Julius unique... Caesar used to sort of rock to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Gavin has a very unique uh, style of jazz flamenco. And we found that it fits in quite seamlessly. So we're very anxious to, um, to do more work in this genre. It's very short notice for people in Christchurch to, to get there tonight. But where and when? <clears throat> uh, it's at the Hornby Hall, Hornby the Hornby High School. School, the Hornby High mm. School this evening yep. at seven. <clears throat> at seven thirty, so be there at seven to get a concert. Yeah, sure, sure. <clears throat> How long is the concert for? Because it, it, obviously you'll have more than what we just listened to. About an hour and a half, isn't it? I think. I think Probably. that. I think yeah, that would be it. Yeah. How do you describe to people when people say, "What sort of music do you play, Gavin?" How do you describe it? My own music. Um, yeah. It's a mix of jazz improvisation with Latin guitar music. So that's what I say. But I mean, if they like, uh, if they know about guitar players like uh, John McLaughlin and Pat Metheny, um, and then Paco de Lucia, the flamenco guitarist, uh, it's a kind of fusion of those styles that I grew up loving, and I've created a lot of my own music, original music around that. So that's pretty much. And what it, it ties is. in with what you're playing, which, as you said, goes back two and a half thousand years. Yeah. And it yeah. sounds sort of very Indian as well, quietly in the background there. Yeah. yeah you know, uh, I, I've never believed in this term fusion. I think music is music. You know. And it's a language that everybody speaks across the world. And uh, the art of living has a presence in 151 countries already. I've been to just about 40 of them. And I found that even when I needed translators to, to even greet people, the music didn't need any translation. So this is something uh, that we've uh, been working on. Yeah. And, and you're obviously working closely together. So you're, not, you're, you're not one in Sydney and one in Bombay for most of the year. Well, we've... Uh, We've had the opportunity to play together about um, eight or ten times, but uh, this is the first time we're doing a duo concert tour, and we're really, really excited about it. Oh, so are we, quite frankly. Okay. It's the uh, it's at the the Hornby School, which is 180 Waterloo Road in Hornby. Tonight, 7:30. Let's just listen to some more of this music. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. And how about yourself? Good, thanks, Roddy. Good. Now, I'm going to ask you to crystal ball gaze. With funeral trends, <laughs> we have the past, we have the present, and obviously going forward. Yeah, it's an interesting where one. Where do we come from? <laughs> yeah, where, where we come from, where do we go, uh, what, what's, what's popular, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about things like eco burials and everything, and it's yes. kind of a, a, a buzzword for our time. You right. Know, we're conscious right. of the environment. But I've been thinking a little bit about... Uh, a lot of the things that we do in a funeral have their roots in popular traditional belief. Right. Okay. We think we do things the way we do them because we always have. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a common trap and a fallacy. I think we look back, we always look backwards to the golden age. And 
my parents and grandparents, they talk about the great years in the 50s um, as in high employment, yes. high productivity. We were selling all our stuff to mm -hmm. England and how wonderful it was in the 50s and how society has deteriorated. And, and funerals are no different. We, we keep looking backwards and going, you know, funerals were great in there, but now they're expensive, now they're manufactured, they're, they're, they're pushed through. There's, and we look back to this sort of mythical time when funerals were um, somewhat... They were an event, weren't they? Well, they were an event. Huge event. Yeah, and a lot of our imagery that we come across and a lot of what's in our mind um, actually harks from a Victorian era. Okay. Where when we came out of, a, out of the Industrial Revolution in England in particular, and all of a sudden um, businesses, funeral directors created businesses out of the... Uh, the shift from c terrible city cemeteries in England. Mm -hmm. um, they had public graveyards, and you can go and see them, and a lot of them are parks now in England, where there are literally hundreds of thousands of deceased buried there, uh, and they were literally dumped. There was no... Unmarked. Unmarked, uh -huh. and it was, they came out of the poor houses, mm -hmm. and the city of London at the turn of the century was well over a million and a half people. And it, so it had a large number. It probably had thirty to 40,000 deaths, probably more than that because the death rate was much higher, infant mortality was yep. much higher. Um, and the city was forced to do something about it. And so it created uh, an act that basically became the basis of our own Burial and Cremation Act here. Mm -hmm. It's currently under review because the, the language in the legislation is nearly 100 years old. Even though I was going to say, it wouldn't have changed a lot. No, then. it's not. It's, it's an 1880s act. Um, and so we're currently, it's under, currently under review and it's being looked at. But a lot, of the, a lot of the things we think are the proper way of doing it mm -hmm. hark from this Victorian era where funerals were literally manufactured in the sense that all of a sudden there was a value placed on burying the dead in an elaborate public manner. Right. Now, didn't I read somewhere where they used to go by train out of London? Is that correct? There is. There, yeah. There's all sorts of um, there are funerals are taken by train. You've mm. got that um, the, the the pictures of the the horses with the big yes. black ostrich feathers, that's right. all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That was that's a, a relatively modern, mm -hmm. and I use it loosely, manufactured funeral because for the hundreds of years prior to that, we didn't value burying the deceased particularly well. Right. So essentially. Looking forward, what we have as a funeral today is only a step in a continuum. Okay, we, will, right. we will evolve and change funerals as society tells the funeral director what they're happy with, essentially. Funeral directors, to a certain extent, can only direct the way a funeral's done to a point where families go, that's not what we're interested in, and then they'll change. And then all funerals will change in that direction. And that may be... Um, I think we're in a point at the moment where we're starting to see a change, and I think it's something that we, we could probably chat about a bit more. I think so. I think we need to, because, uh, you know, um, as you say, we've got to this stage, but can you see it, what, five, six years, or we've got longer? No, I, I think it'll, it'll take a generation, mm -hmm. um, but I believe that funerals will become simultaneously more sophisticated and, and also more simple. We're going to talk about this more next week. Thanks, Absolutely. Riley. In fact, if you think about it, you've probably seen the start of that change already. After the break, it's movie time.